Hey everyone, it's the Snakey back again with another video. Have you ever wanted to relive a gaming experience you had on maybe like the 360 or the PS3 with higher resolution, higher FPS? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to do when I purchased Prototype 2 from the Steam store recently. I uh, got it at a sale price. It's now gone back up to 30 euros, which is ludicrous in my opinion. But anyways, so I wanted to play this and relive the best time I had, to be honest with you, in, in, in many years. I really enjoyed playing Prototype 2 when it came out first. Uh, the sandbox is really, really fun. So I went ahead and I expected just to be able to launch the game, as you normally would, without any sort of issues. And the game initially looked like it was going to launch just fine. I got my uh, initial prompts on the screen, and then I came to the Radical Entertainment splash screen, and everything went ass up, and it crashed back out to the desktop. And the reason this happens is because after a three-hour rabbit hole on the internet, Prototype 2 doesn't particularly like modern-day computers with uh, many more than four cores. So because my computer, I'm running a 3700X here, uh, I was you know, not exactly fulfilling those requirements. So I tried loads of different fixes like going into Control Panel and Device Manager and disabling HID devices. Didn't work. Also tried running in compatibility mode, which made the game run like ass. I could actually run it, but it didn't run properly. So I eventually found out that you need to limit the number of cores that Steam runs with, which will then allow Prototype to run with a limited number of cores as well. So to do this, we have to uh, change the affinity or the number of cores that, that Steam launches with. So to do that, we're going to exit out of here. We have to create what's called a batch file, which is a script that will uh, execute some sort of line of code. In this case, it's going to tell the executable to run, executable to run with less cores. So first thing we have to do is we need to um, be able to change our file extension. So I want you to go into your file explorer, go into view, and you're going to go up here to file name extensions and tick that. And now on all of these files, I can actually see what they are. So we can see here that this one I've created already. This is what you're going to be creating. We can now see dot bat. So we're going to go down here. We're going to go to new and we're going to go to text document. And I'm just going to call mine steam two because I already have a steam. And you're going to go in here and you're going to take this line of code, which I have left down in the description below, and you're going to paste that in. You will need to take the location that Steam is installed and paste that in here. The start forward slash affinity FF will stay the same. And all you're going to change is the, the directory. Your directory could be exactly the same. Who knows? Just make sure that program files bracket x86 has got quotations around it. It won't by default. It's not going to run properly. Then you're going to exit out of that and you're going to go save. Now we need to change this to a batch file. To do that, all we do is we click to rename it and you change it to .bat and you go yes. And now it's changed to a batch file, which will run the, the exe file, Steam's exe file, but it will limit the number of cores it runs with, thus allowing us to play a prototype. So I'm going to launch my one up here. Steam launches as normal. You won't notice any difference really and then get into our library. Now, what I want to do before I actually run Prototype, now you may just want to launch it straight away. You may be playing on a 1080p monitor, that's fine. I wanted mine to run at 1440p and 60 frames a second. I wanted to limit that. And to do that, you come down here to launch options and you change that to resolution equals 2560 by 1440 at 60. You could change this to be higher if you wanted, but um, the frame rate's quite inconsistent, anything above 80, so I just keep mine at 60. So now we go and play this, and now Prototype runs as before and will look exactly the same, albeit at a higher resolution if you've used that um, launch properties there. But now we can actually get past the Radical Splash screen, and it'll go onto the Activision screen, and you can actually play the game as normal, and it will also have stabilized the performance as well, for you're not going to have low frame rates like if you run in compatibility mode. So now we can run around here. And I can just show you that it runs smooth as butter, absolutely no problems whatsoever. You can even go in here to your settings, options, and you can see that no matter what you set the resolution at, it's going to keep it at 1920 by 1080. Just It displays as that, but actually we're running at 1440. I've turned on VSync because I wanted G-Sync and all that good stuff. And you can max out all your settings there, no problem at all. So let's just uh, pick up one of these infected and knead them in the face here. Lovely, fly and knee to the face. And yeah, smooth as butter, guys, and absolutely no problems. And I've been playing this now through the campaign, and I'm quite a good bit of the way through, and I have no problems whatsoever. It's, it hasn't crashed once on me. It's just playing flawlessly. I'm not saying this isn't a horribly optimized PC port. I mean, the fact that I can get 120 frames most of the time, but it still does dip quite a bit. 
uh, that just shows you that it really isn't a particularly good PC port. And I remember back in the back in the day, many YouTubers are complaining about this and how poorly it ran. So that's my fix, guys, on how to play Prototype 2. Right in the face. How to play. I'm going to stop playing now because I'll just continue playing all day otherwise. How to get Prototype 2 working on modern day hardware. If you have any questions or you're having any issues, you can leave them down in the comments below. Uh, if you like my content, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to get notified about when I upload my next video in two years' time or whenever it'll, wherever it may be, you can ring that bell and you'll get a notification on your device telling you when my next video goes live. Thanks for tuning into the video, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.